and we are live. Good afternoon and welcome to another opportunity here for learning and education brought to you by my friends at Modern Salon Media. How cool is this? The technology to be able to go live and share information with the entire world in the professional beauty and barber community. We've been using this to share great things and my friends with Jatai, you know the Feather Razor folks, uh, have had me on their channel, they've had me on my channel. Um, here we are today spending some time with our friends at Modern Salon. We are in a little echo chamber classroom here at the Barber Academy on Golf Road in Schaumburg, Illinois. Not too far out west, not too far north in the suburbs, but out in the Chicago metropolitan area where I live. I got a model today, everybody wants you to meet Larry. Larry's a good friend of mine, I've been cutting Larry's hair for years when his wife doesn't cut his hair or when he doesn't have to get a haircut for something and he goes out somewhere to get a haircut, but Larry's agreed to run away from the office for a little bit this afternoon to allow me to use him to share with you some great information. So thank you to Modern Salon for hosting us. Thank you to Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. That's where you want to go for tons of great information. I post a lot of video content on Jatai Academy. Jatai Academy features video content from a wealth of other really exciting, talented, modern, and progressive barbers and haircutters in the beauty and barber industry. They're always sharing great content. And of course, there's always my stuff too. Clipperguide.com is my website where I do a lot of my sharing. So between modern, Jatai, and me, we've got a ton of great stuff to share. What we want to talk about today specifically is about some of the crossover phenomenon that's really been such a big deal in the men's haircutting category in our industry today. You know, we've got a lot of folks that are cosmetologists that are cutting a lot more men's hair. And of course, we've got a lot of barbers that have just been exploding with opportunity as that barber category has got so much heat and light and energy in the beauty industry today. I can tell you right here at Barber Academy, I can remember when they first opened here, and it's a big barber school, I can remember they had students in three, four, five chairs. We are in the classroom today because they don't have a chair on the floor that they'll let Ivan use. That says a little bit about what's going on. They're jammed with students here. I couldn't be happier for them, and I couldn't be happier for the industry in general because, hey, I was country when country wasn't cool. I was doing this barber thing 30 years ago before all of you discovered just how cool it is. But since you now know how cool it is, and since one of the hottest things in the industry is crossover. Crossover is the term they use to refer to cosmetology professionals that want to get in on the barber game. Maybe they go back to school and get a barber license. Here in the state of Illinois where I live, you need 1,500 hours to get a cos license. You need 1,500 hours to get a barber license. If you have one and you want the other, the state will give you partial credit, so you don't have to go back to school for all 15. Check with your state. The rules are different in different states, but it's important to understand that this is hot right now, and there's so many things that barbers, because I got a barber license, can share with cause folks, and there's so many things that cause folks, I got a cause license too, can share with the barber people that it's amazing the potential for business growth and opportunity in our industry today. So one of the things we want to talk about in that crossover category that always comes up is the subject of razor work. Using razors, sideburns, ear areas, and necklines. And again, state by state, things can be different. Here in the state of Illinois, a licensed cosmetologist is prohibited from using a straight razor on skin to shave the face or to clean up the neckline, sideburns, or ear areas. That falls in the domain of a barber license. That's all good, that's the rules. We play by the rules, know the rules, follow the rules, and respect the rules. Other states may differ. Now a barber can do those things. But we have some opportunities brought to you by Jatai, by the Feather Razor folks, by virtue of the unique products and tools that they offer that can allow a cosmetologist to, under the right circumstances, with the right tools, use a straight razor to lather and clean the neckline, shape the sideburns, and clean around the ears. But before we get into how, let's take a minute and talk about why. Why do you want to do this? Well. How much is a haircut? Depends where you work, depends what you charge. I know in the Chicago metropolitan area, you can get a haircut for 10 bucks. You can get a haircut at Quickie Cuts, Zippy Cuts, 
You know those places down by the mall? You can get a coupon and you can pay even less. And that's okay. I know I can send you to places here in Chicago. You can get a men's haircut for $100 or more. What's the difference? The difference can be the environment. The difference can be the service. The difference can be a lot of different elements of what is being provided in exchange for that money. One of the coolest things about the business, 330 million people in America, half of them are dudes. All of them need haircuts. There's more opportunity than we could ever hope for or want. We're not competing with each other. We're competing with other op options for discretionary income. There are customers and opportunities at every price point. So let's get Larry set up here and let's talk about enhancing this service. Let's talk about taking a regular hair service, assuming you are a cosmetology professional. Let's get a fresh neck strip, it's not broken. Sanex strips, everybody uses them. And you know what, when can you skip it? Legally, when are you, as long as we're talking about laws and regulations, when can you skip the next strip? Does anybody know? Oh, and by the way, speaking of commenting, does anybody know, don't forget, follow this, web well, of course, if you're listening to me, you're following this webinar. We want you watching the webinar. We want you to like the webinar. We want you to comment on the webinar, and we want you to share the webinar. If you do those three things, if you watch, if you comment and if you share, we're gonna enter you in a drawing. We're gonna be giving away some cool stuff. We're giving away something called a uh, feather nape and body kit. I'll tell you what that is. I'll show you what it's all about in just a bit. But no, we want you in on the drawing. So please comment, like, and share. Um, my producer, my executive producer, my cameraman, my sound engineer, I got a whole crew here you can't see online. But uh, all those folks are gonna be here to be able to uh, communicate with me if you guys are commenting. But when can you skip the next trip? That was the question. And the answer is, you can skip the next trip if you use a freshly laundered cape for every customer. Legally, you're allowed to skip the next trip. But Ivan's gonna say, even if you use a freshly laundered cape for every client, don't skip the next trip. Next trips say barbering. When you talk about crossover, if you're a cause professional and you're talking about creating that barbered experience for your customers, I'm gonna tell you, use the next trips. And by the way, I had a bad next trip. I pulled one out of the dispenser and it tore and I didn't use it, but did you see what I didn't do? I didn't throw the next strip on the floor. Don't do that. Next trips on the floor, and I know you guys, I see you on Instagram, you take pictures of your chair, and there's hair all over the floor, and there's neck strips on the floor, and you go online and you go, busy barber. You gotta know, when I see that, I'm thinking, dirty scumbag, not busy barber. No neck strips on the floor. If it's not convenient to throw the neck strip in the garbage can, and I don't see a garbage can in the room, I'm just gonna put it on the counter, but if it's not convenient to put that neck strip in the garbage can, move the garbage can. Make it convenient. We don't throw this stuff on the floor. So we got an extra strip, we got a cape. A lot of times I use disposable or paper towels. Sometimes I will use cloth or fabric towels at the neckline like this. Now, he's got a t-shirt on. If he had a nice dress shirt on, especially if we were concerned about possibly uh, getting that, next, that shirt dirty. You know, here's the thing. You do a beautiful haircut on Larry at noon. He loves you. It's a great haircut. You're his buddy. But in his 2.30 meeting this afternoon, with that much hair down the back of his shirt, Larry doesn't love me anymore. Larry hates me, because he's itching and scratching, it's making him crazy. So, we use a neck strip, because the law says we use a neck strip, because it's the right thing to do. But we use a neck strip, because neck strips say barbering. And we use a neck strip, because it's part of the experience, and it's part of keeping them clean. I've got a towel on there, I got my cape sitting on my neck strip, and lastly, anybody that knows me knows I love my robo collar. My goodness, I love my robo collar. This is the greatest piece of customer service in the business. It goes on last. That can touch the skin because we're gonna spray that when we're done with Clipperside, Clipper spray disinfectant, spray it with Clipperside. It's non-porous material fully sanitized with a spray of clipper side, and that's reusable, but now I've got a gasket on there. There's nothing on Larry's side of the equation. He can go back to work. He's gonna love me tonight just as much as he loved me this morning. So we've got our client caked and draped and ready to go. We would perform our haircut service. Now for today's purposes, I'm not gonna knock out a whole haircut. His hair was recently cut, things looked pretty good. I'm gonna pick up a trimmer and finishing comb and I'm gonna detail his perimeter just a little bit to make sure we like everything we have going on here. 
And you guys know from all the videos and things I've talked about, I'm standing on one side of my client, I'm doing my trimmer and my detail work, and I'm going to use my mirror on the other side. I've got my thin, fine finishing comb to taper in the perimeter there. This is standard sideburn stuff. Nothing fancy, nothing tricky. Fold that ear down out of the way and follow around it, getting a nice clean line around the ear. Now, in the rear quarter panel here, the hair grows down or slightly forward. Comb it down or slightly forward in its natural growth direction. Apply some tension on the skin. When you're happy with that side, and only when you're happy with that side, do you turn the finished side towards the mirror. Cameraman's gonna swing over here, and you're gonna be able to see the cameraman. And by the way, that's not a cameraman. Um, <laughs> that's a camera lady. Uh, but look, I can see this sideburn and that sideburn at the same time. Turning my chair, using my mirror. These are powerful tools in the professional beauty and barber industry. We're gonna pitch slightly here so that our camera person falls off the screen because she didn't show up today to be on camera. <laughs> okay, detail it up that corner, coming in here using the last tooth on the corner of the trimmer to arc the ear area. Notice when I arc the ear area, I went from three o'clock to 12 o'clock and I stopped. Now I comb that hair down or slightly forward, I fold the ear down from above and I come in from nine o'clock back up to 12 o'clock to execute a nice clean arc through the ear area. You know, years ago I had a video series called Men's Hair Cutting from A to Zoot. I thought that was really cute at the time. A, B, C, you know the alphabet. A in that series was arc the ear area. And I had a video that talked about exactly that. It talked about thinking about the ear like it was a clock and cutting from three to 12 and nine to 12 and stopping at top dead center. That's exactly what you saw me do with Larry right here just now. Now, watch my finger. I apply pressure on the skin, and notice how things tighten up there, and then I use the trimmer against the natural growth direction with the non-moving blade in direct physical contact with the skin. Notice what I didn't do, and we see this all the time. Some of our cause folks like to do this. They'll turn that trimmer over to block the line, and then they'll drag it down the side of somebody's head with the non-moving blade against the client. That's gonna create 28 perfectly parallel bright red scratches. That's called rednecking somebody. Now, I don't know where you live, but nobody I know wants to be a redneck, all right? So don't be scraping them like that. Block your line at 90 degrees or perpendicular, turn the tool over, and clean up against the natural growth pattern or direction. Now, Larry's got a little bit of texture in his hair, and Larry tends to have a subtly blocked neckline. We're not gonna punch a hard line on his neckline, but we're going to follow what is there with a subtly blocked neckline. I like to go in and put just a little bit of a taper on the edge of that. He doesn't really get it fully faded in. This is the look he likes, so this is what we look to create. He's got a little bit of distorted growth direction there that we have to contend with. And these are the assessments we make on every head of hair that sits in our chair every time we work through some of these little details. Now, we've got our basic haircut in place, everything is good, and we tuned up our trimming. Now it's time to get into the nitty gritty of razor, razoring the perimeter, the neckline, the sideburns, and things like that. So we're going to talk tools a little bit, then we're going to talk product, then we're going to get into it. I mentioned earlier, remember, follow the video, like the video, share the video, comment on this live video. And by the way, for those of you that are not watching live, it's right now, it's a quarter after one, we're in the thick of it and it's live and you are here with us and we're thrilled to have you. However, it could be midnight later today and you're watching on the replay. It could be Thursday next week and you're watching on the replay. I don't know that we're gonna to go to Thursday next week, but we are gonna do a drawing both for those people participating live as well as a drawing for those people who do choose to come back and participate on the replay. And I think you could probably get away with an entry on the live and an entry on the replay and be entered into both. But that's up to the folks at Jatai Academy to sort out the legalities on that. This is the Feather Nape and Body Razor Kit. This is kind of cool. I'm going to show you what's in the kit, what makes up the kit, and this is, and I, you guys have bought so many of these from me. Thank you very much. 
you know, baby needs new shoes. You guys have been great to Clipper Guy World. Cosmetology professionals love this nape and body razor. If you don't have one and if you don't win one, you're gonna wanna get one. Here's what you get. You get the nape and body razor. And it is a small, compact, swivel hinge shaving razor. It features Jatai's nape and body blade. And I'm gonna hold this up for the camera. You're gonna zoom in really close. And you can see there's a micro fine wire mesh that overlaps the blade. Can't cut you, can't cut client. Beautiful cutting, clean and close with hair. This is kind of cool. Garrett now, says, oh my God, I need one in my life. Garrett says, oh my God, I need one in my life. Garrett, oh my God, you need one in your life. <laughs> Absolutely. These are cool. And this is why we're sharing this. And this is why I get so excited about this tool. So the Nathan Body Kit has the razor. The Nape and Body Kit has the tray of blades. Now when we talk about Feathers Blades and Feathers blade system, it's important to understand how this blade tray works. We want you to handle the blades carefully. You slide the button forward to eject the blade. The blade comes out. Feather has our blade disposal bins that come with our freestyle razors. You can use this. And the idea here is what goes in doesn't come out. If you don't use the Feather blade disposal case, I highly recommend that anyone and everyone has a Sharps bin on their station. They're $1.95, you get them at any drugstore, you put blades in, they don't come out. When they're filled, you close them and you dispose of them. This is contaminated medical waste. This is dirty razor blades in the nail salon. This is orange wood sticks. This is safety. And having this on your station, next to your barbicide jar, and next to your can of clipper side, what this really is, it's disinfection, it's infection control, but you know what it really is, guys? This is marketing. This is the way that you, as a haircutting professional, barber or cause, say to your customer, I got you, don't worry. I am protecting you from all of them. I'm protecting all of them from you, and I am doing what's right. I know what I need to be doing. You know, you guys know I'm a big fan of Barbicide. Side note, bonus, extra free education, Barbicide.com on the web. We told you about Jatai Academy for a ton of great information. I'm gonna throw in Barbicide.com. Go there. Barbicide Certification is an online educational program. Click and read and click and listen, click and watch and click and do. Take the test, 13 questions. I know you can pass if you pay attention. You will then be Barbicide Certified. This is a free additional level of infection control, sanitation and disinfection education. Fundamentally important for everybody in our business. Please go there and do that. It's totally free. Barbicide.com. Where's so, the best place to dispose of that disposable bin? That's a great question. Where's the best place to dispose of a sharps container? Here's the deal. They've got a little one-way latch. When it's filled, you turn the tab down and you latch it closed. And you take it to any pharmacy counter in America. Walgreens, Walmart, Rite Aid, Target, Dwayne Reed, CVS, whoever we have in your neighborhood, you walk up to the pharmacy counter and you say to the person at the pharmacy counter, hmm, that's all you have to say. You don't have to say anything. They're required by law to take it away from you. Now I've heard from time to time, somebody say, my Walgreens wouldn't take it away or my CVS wouldn't take it. Don't sweat it. You can always take it to the fire department. Take it to the fire department, walk, and hey, you know, it's always fun to visit the firefighters. When you go to the fire department, bring cookies, bring donuts. These people are frontline first responders looking out for your health, safety, and welfare. They would appreciate a donut. But when you bring them your sharp spin and you bring them a donut, just give it to Mr. Fireman and say, hey, Mr. Fireman, I gotta get rid of this. It's contaminated. And the fireman will say, thank you for the donut, and he'll take it away from you, and it's gone. And that's what you do. Great question, thank you for asking asking that one. It's an important one and it does come up from time to time. So we properly disposed of our blades. Now we're gonna pick up a new one. We take the handle, we simply go to the tray, we grab a blade. It's called the no-touch system. Now the beautiful thing about the disposal bin when we're using it for our freestyle haircutting razor is you set the razor in like that, you put your thumb down on top of the handle and you pull. Blade's gone, dropped away, it's in and it's safe. Again, no-touch system. I'm not sure because I've never done it. I think you can probably put them in here without touching. Let's try it. And there it goes. It's gone. Now, you guys just recognize I just threw away a brand new, perfectly good blade. Thank you to my friends at Tatai. They keep me stocked in blades. I'm happy to pick up another one. And again, state laws. 
Many states, Illinois where I live says, one blade per client, throw it away after every client. You're not supposed to be reusing the blades. They go in the sharps bin, they go away. So that's your nape and body handle. You also get your pack of blades with your nape and body razor. You also get a bottle of blade glide. This is the sample size, the two ounce blade glide. This is a shaving and razor cutting lotion. I spray it on the hair when I razor cut on longer lengths of hair. We're also gonna use it on one side as a shaving product when we clean up one of Larry's sideburns. So you'll get to see uh, Blade Glide in action. But these are the things that you get inside the Nape and Body Kit. You're gonna buy one, somebody's gonna win one. Remember, like, comment, share, do what you gotta do. The other tool I do wanna share is our full-size shaving razor. This is our Scotchwood handle, our SS series razor. And what I have here, and I'm gonna eject that blade carefully, this one, and this one's dirty and I'm gonna throw it away, but I'm gonna show you, I can use my feather blade disposal case, I can use my traditional sharp spin, or in the how cool is that category, this is my Feather Pro Guard razor blade set. The blades go in the bottom. Once they're in the bottom, they're in the bottom and they're not coming out. Dobby's so, asking, um, could you give me a price and where do I get one? J-A-T-A-I dot net is Jatai's website. You can buy direct from Feather. Many of the barber catalog dealers, many of the barber supply houses stock a wide assortment of the Feather and the Jatai products. I don't know where you live and I don't know who's the best choice in your area. But I know if you're watching this live at Modern Salon on Facebook, you've got internet, which means you can go to J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. And when you do that, how about a coupon code? Anybody like coupon codes? Put in Ivan, I-V-A-N, 0618. That's my name, Ivan. 06 is June. 18 is the month. 0618, or, or the year. 06 is June. 18 is the year. Ivan 0618, 15% off on anything you buy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. And they've got everything that Feather Jatai stocks here in America. But these are your ProGuard blades. Now this blade goes in the standard SS handle. And the SS handle is a great choice for cosmetology and barber professionals. It's going to be hard to see, but I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I want you to see that we have a hollow grind area on the razor head. And then there's a bit of a bump out there. Can you see that bump or that ridge that runs along the blade area? That actually serves to depress the skin as the razor is advancing along the skin, it depresses the skin behind the blade to allow the skin to drop down and the blade to come in. It's a way that the Feather SS Design handles cut very clean and close, very smooth and effective, and they minimize the chance for nicking and cutting skin. So that's our wooden handle on our full-size razor. I've got the ProGuard blade in there. Now Feather makes an assortment of blades. They make a standard blade, for general hair cutting and shaving, or general shaving, they make a super blade, which is a little thicker and heavier and has a little more blade exposure. The blade sticks out of the handle a little bit further. That is for thick, coarse, and heavy hair. They have a fine blade. The fine blades are a little thinner, also with a standard amount of blade exposure for very fine or very thin hair. I mentioned the ProGuard blades. They also have, uh, I mentioned heavy, I mentioned fine, I mentioned standard, I mentioned pro guard, and we've got soft guard. The soft guard blade is a finer blade with a unique guarded design, much like the pro guard, and the pro guard's wire wrapping that you can see there is similar to the nape and body wire wrapping, and here's the good news. You've been hanging in and waiting for this. This is what I'm here to tell you today. As a licensed cosmetology professional, you can clean up sideburns and necklines on skin with a feather nape and body or a feather pro guard blade, you don't need the barber license. This is where you as a cosmetology professional can enhance the quality of what you deliver to clients, can enhance the client experience in a big way, and can step up your game in that crossover category. So we've done our trimmer work, we've got Larry all set up here. Larry knows I've got three Guinness world records for haircutting, and Larry is sitting through the longest haircut of his entire life with me, because I haven't done any haircutting. But we're still having fun and we appreciate him being here. So one of the things we talk about is steam towels. Whether you use a steam towel cabinet, 
And many of us had made that small investment in doing quality work, or whether you use a traditional cloth towel and you do a traditional steam towel, where you fold the towel, you roll the towel, and I'm only gonna mock through this, but this is an example of where we add huge quality and value to our client experience. We go to the sink, we turn on the sink, we turn the water to really crazy hot, we let it run, we let it get hot. Then we take our rolled up towel, we hold it under the sink, and we let the water run through it to heat the towel. Heat, 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 hot, 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 hot water running through towel, that's what you're imagining, don't close your eyes. Pretend with me all the way here. I've got my steam towel. When I'm done, at the very last instant, I pull the towel away, I switch the water to cold, I stick my hand under the cold water to chill my hand, then I grab the towel and I squeeze and I wring out all that hot water. The cold water on my hand prevents me from scalding my hands. Now I've got a hot steam towel, <coughs> excuse me, hot steam towel manufactured with running water at the station. I take that towel, I unfold it and I apply it to the client's neck. I just let it sit there. Now it's not gonna hang out there well because it's a dry towel and I'm just mocking you through this, but I'm gonna let that sit there. That's going to feel warm and comfortable. I've turned my regular haircut into a spa experience. It's gonna feel good. You can put a couple of drops of essential oil in your water in your steam towel cabinet or you can drop a little bit of essential oil onto the towel for a fragrant experience. Um, there are essential oils, peppermint as an example, which is invigorating. There's lavender, which is more calming. Those of you that know more than I do about essential oils know exactly what I'm talking about. But we're gonna leave that set long enough for us to get our fresh, clean blade. Now, you saw me put a brand new blade in here. And by the way, there's a rule that says, if I don't see you change the blade, it probably didn't happen. So one of the things I like to do is I like to change blades what do you think of those cat-like reflexes? Not as good as I thought they were, all right? But you saw that we got the point across with the towel. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, we were talking about using that steam towel, softening things up, getting ready. Oh, we're talking about changing the blades, that's right. Frequently, when it's time for me to change the blades, I will turn the client towards the counter so that the client sees me removing the blade from the razor, dropping the razor in the disposal bin, and picking up a clean blade. Now, if you're paying attention, that's two. That's two brand new unused blades that went in the blade disposal bin. Thank you, Jatai, we appreciate it. But now, we've got our razor, we had our steam towel on there softening up the hair, lubricating the skin. It's time to go in for product. Now, many of us would instinctively reach over and press the button on top of our hot lather machine and take out a nice frothy ball of warm lather. But we're not gonna do that. And there's a reason we're not gonna do that. I am going to go to the products that are featured in the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Set. That's what you're looking at right there. These are three pieces, one, two, and three. There's daily facial cleanser, shaving cream, and daily facial moisturizer. Those are the three items in the line. I, we're not going to use the cleanser today, but you can pre-cleanse with this if you wish. We're going to use the shave cream. And the question is, somebody watching out there in TV land, why would I use Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream Professional for men instead of hot lather from a machine on my counter? Anybody know? What's your guess? Anybody want to chime in and tell me why would I go here? I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. Meanwhile, I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer is I'm going to go here because I have this available for purchase at the front of the shop. And I would never use anything on a client that they cannot buy. I'm gonna use a product that I am able, and this one's a brand new one, so I gotta open up and I gotta take off the safety seal. Probably something that should have been done during pre-show prep, but we missed that. So we'll do it right here live along the way. I'm gonna take a small amount of my shave cream and I'm gonna apply that to the area that we're going to shave. Now this area would have been pre-dampened by virtue of the steam towel that we used. If it's not, you could moisten it with a water bottle as well. But we're gonna apply that. Now we're going to shave. We're gonna remove the shave cream. Now I'm gonna actually open up. I'm gonna take off my robo collar. I'm gonna open my cape now because we're done with our clipping. I'm gonna open the next strip because we're gonna go down below that line there. Let me grab my water bottle. 
Just mist that lightly. So there's a little bit of moisture or hydration there. And I'm just going to add a little more product because we're going far enough down. And you'll see that. And notice, it stays clear. This product does not lather or foam. I want to be able to see through it. I want to see and respect the line of my haircut. I worked hard to get that haircut finished the way I want it. I don't want to cut into it because I can't see through a whole bunch of frothy lather. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to shave. I'm going to hold my razor in my hand. It goes between my two middle fingers, the handle like that. There's a small area here where I can rest my thumb for balance, stability, and control. I'm gonna apply pressure on the skin and I'm going to shave. Smooth strokes. Notice I wipe the excess shave cream and the hair that comes away on the towel. And I move over overlapping strokes, cleanly removing that hair. Now notice the ProGuard blade will not nick, scratch, or cut him and it does a beautiful job of shaving right down to the skin. That's gonna feel clean, fresh, and wonderful. I'm gonna to switch to my full size just so you can see that Scotchwood SS razor in my hand. Again, this one's got a little more heft and bulk. The blade's a little wider, but it still features that ProGuard. Could a cosmetologist use this razor as well? Yes, any blade that contains that wire wrapping. That's why I'm choosing to feature both of them. The question was, can a cos professional use this razor is because of the wire wrapping. The handle is fairly irrelevant, but you're using either the nape and body handle with the nape and body blade or the SS razor with the ProGuard blade. Both feature that wire wrapping that makes this available to each and every cause professional. Again, check with your state. There may be some states where this does not apply, but generally speaking, that is not the case, that we open up the realm of being able to do this service in this way with our clients. That's gonna look clean, that's gonna feel great, that adds a wonderful finish. Now, I do wanna share, because we spoke about it, Blade Glide. Blade Glide can be applied several ways. You could spray Blade Glide directly on the client, or you can spray Blade Glide in your hand. It's a fluid, liquidy kind of potion there, and I can apply that directly to the area that I wish to shave, in this case, at the sideburn, and up over and around the ear, I'm gonna go back to my Nathan body razor, and here because it's on this side, I go to a backhand position. Notice I use my thumb to great, gain some tension on the skin, and shave, I can pull that tight, coming forward. I can come in over there, sorry, my arm's gonna block the camera, but if you come over my shoulder, come in here. Back up in behind the ear. Uh, Tasha is asking, how does it work on facial hair like a hot shave service? How does it work on facial hair like a hot shave service? Great question, Tasha. Thank you for asking. Just by commenting and asking, Tasha, you got one thing left to do. When we're done, share this video so that you'll be entered in on the drawing. The question is, nothing changes. You're just moving to a different piece of real estate. I can shave my arm. It'll all work the same way. If you do full facial shaves. Now, I can't speak to the laws, the rules, and the regulations in your unique market Check with your State Department of Professional Regulation in terms of whether legally you're allowed to do that. But I can tell you that in principle and practice, some of it does come down to real estate. If you're gonna do face shaving, you're gonna want a larger blade because the small blade's gonna have a lot of strokes and a lot of overlap and you've got a lot of area to cover. So this may not be totally practical for full face shaving, although it'll work perfectly well. The larger blade, obviously, if you're doing a standard stroke pattern to do a shave, Boom, boom, boom. With a big blade like this, it's quick and easy and it's over and it's done. Uh, so the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream works perfectly for that. Blade Glide can work as well for face shaving. You know, we see a lot of these videos on Instagram where they're saturating beards or facial hair with some of these modern shave products. Blade Glide will do the same thing. Spray it on very, very liberally, very heavily to fully saturate the hair and get down to the skin and just wipe, it like, looks like you're wiping away the hair. It is that easy and that smooth. We got one side left to finish. We're gonna finish this side. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of shave cream. And by the way, while I'm doing this, I'm blocking his face so I don't squirt him in the eye there. While I'm doing this uh, in pieces, on a live client, I would lather the whole thing, shave the whole thing. It would have been done a long time ago. Larry would be already eating his lunch and back at his desk. Um, but he's given up a piece of the day for all of you and for me. And we all have a debt of gratitude to him for his participation. 
So we're gonna come in now and we're gonna finish up this side. She can come in over my shoulder, camera person. Tension on the skin. And remember, it's not about pressure. People ask, how hard are you pushing with the razor? The answer is it's not about pressure, it's about position. If the razor is held 90 degrees to the skin like that, I can scrape down like that, I won't cut anything. When the razor is laying flatter to the skin, even a dull blade can cut through quite a bit, very, very rapidly. So it's really about managing the razor's position relative to the work area and relative to what we're doing. Somebody's asking, have you ever used this to uh, manscape eyebrows? Have you ever used this to manscape eyebrows? I'm gonna go back to my previous answer of, I don't care where you got hair. I don't care what hair you wanna cut off. The secret to shaving really comes down to knowing and understanding what the blade will do. Of course you can do this for eyebrows and properly preparing the hair and skin. If the hair and skin is prepared properly, meaning with a product that's going to provide lubrication, protect the skin, a product that's going to soften the hair, you know, anything pH 7 or more, anything actually 5.5 5 or more is going to really begin to swell the hair shaft and get the hair shaft to absorb some liquid or moisture, and it's really going to peel away very nicely. So the answer is eyebrows, for sure, sideburns, absolutely, necklines, game on, full face shaving, perhaps. Um, you know, when we talk about hair removal, this is not a program to talk about waxing. But hey, I'll throw that in there. When you get good at waxing, when you get good at waxing, the men's game, as we look to expand our business in the men's market, there's huge money to be made with waxing some of our male clients. So, um, other barber things, wax as well? Barbers can wax, absolutely. It may not be covered extensively in barber school. It should be covered in your barber textbook. I saw one sitting over there when we first walked in. Uh, it may not be covered comprehensively live in school, but certainly attend a trade show or educational event. Sit in on a waxing class. Get a couple of buddies to practice on, and then get out there and turn these into revenue-generating services for your business. And that's where I want to wrap things up with Larry is I want to touch on revenue generation because one of the big pieces of the why behind this, we showed you the how to clean up a neckline with a Jatai feather product. We talked a little bit about the crossover aspect of stylists wanting to be able to do this. Let's put the cherry on this little chocolate sundae and talk about one of the biggest whys for why this is so important. Money. If you're getting 12 for a haircut and you're gonna use a towel, a hot towel, and a razor, and a little lather on the neckline, your $12 haircut just became 17. If you've been getting 20 for a haircut and you're gonna enhance the quality of what you do with a razor and lather and a beautiful finish like that, your $20 haircut just became 27. If you've been getting 30 for a haircut, welcome to 40. You get where I'm going with this? Kind of see what I'm talking about? By adding experience, by adding value, by adding quality, even adding longevity and durability, because when you shave a neckline with a razor, it's gonna stay nice longer than if you just ran over it with a trimmer. You're adding durability. All of these things add up to value for your customer. And anytime you are delivering greater value for your customer, you can ask your customer to deliver a few more dollars to your cash register. Now, I'm gonna thank Larry, I'm gonna shake Larry's hand, and I'm gonna switch Larry up for the mannequin because one of the things we did wanna talk about was cutting in a hard parting. Hard partings are very popular with a lot of our, our pompadour haircuts and some of our, our side parted haircuts right now. We didn't wanna cut a hard part on Larry's haircut. I didn't tell him we were gonna do that, so we're not gonna do that. But we are gonna do it to the mannequin because we're gonna cover hard parting so that you understand how to execute that. Because again, from a crossover conversation standpoint, so many of our cause folks and friends are wanting to be able to tap into this opportunity. So we wanna shine a little bit of light on how that works. So we're gonna take Larry's cape away. We're gonna shake Larry's hand and say thank you for being here and participating, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, we do have some parting product gifts for Larry. Larry, come on back here just one second. We appreciate his time, and, and we're going to give Larry a Clipper Guy by John Amico Firm Hold Hair Gel. We know Larry likes crispy hair gel. I have been Larry's source for crispy hair gel for years and years, so there's one for you. And, of course, if you put product in, you've got to take product out. And anytime somebody buys one product, there's always a companion product to go with it. If they buy gel, you give them shampoo. If they buy shampoo, you give them gel. You see how that works? So you've got a Firm Hold Power Gel, and you've got a Clipper Guy shampoo to get it all out. Appreciate you. you being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we're going to jump over to mannequin land, and we're going to take a look at what we can do with this hard parting conversation. 
Now, my mannequin's got a less than a full haircut. It's just kind of a chopped up mannequin. But she's got enough, he's got enough going on here to allow us to demo what we've got here. And I'm a big believer that when we do some of these hard partings, I like to put product in the hair. The product gives the hair a little bit of tenacity and control, a little bit of fight and a little bit of bite, a little bit of cooperation. So I'm going to use, this is the Clipper Guy John Amico uh, Classic Wax. I'm going to use a small amount of Classic Wax on my finger and on my hand and in the hair. And it's, we're not really styling right now, but I want the hair to go where I want it to go and stay where I want it to be to execute that hard parting. A little bit of product now helps me get a little bit of control over the hair. It also helps me begin the product conversation. We wanna be having product conversations. We wanna be talking about the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave items during the shave portion of the service. So Are all of those available for retail, all three? Um, they're available a couple different ways. There's actually a fourth one. There's a beard uh, treatment and beard softening product that's not part of the kit. This is sold as a three-piece kit. The individual items are also available a la carte, which is the three plus the beard product as well are also available. So when you go on the Jatai website, um, you'll see them there. I got them online at clipperguy.com too. Um, but we're going to come here. We're going to strike our parting. I'm not getting into why the parting is there. That's an artistic or creative decision. That's uh, content for a whole other class on where to put the parting, why to put the parting there. We can have a whole day to talk about that. I just want to put the parting there. And you'll notice by having a little bit of product in the hair, the parting is going to execute just a little cleaner. Now, on its own, sometimes it will stay there. Otherwise, of course, you go to a hair a clipper guy gripper and a gripper will be used to hold the hair in place one side or the other where you want it. Those are always handy dandy and nice. Now, the rules for etching a hard parting with a trimmer is you want to work with the non-moving blade on the long side of the hair with the moving teeth towards the short side. So when we go in to tap our parting, we want to be taking hair from the short side of the equation. So I'm going to switch sides here so cameraman can come in there. There you go. And everybody watching just went, cameraman? Not quite. All right, notice how I'm tapping that. And notice I've got the non-moving blade protecting the side I don't want to cut from. And I'm tapping. Now the little bit of product in the hair is preventing a lot of clippings and things from falling away. But after I tap, tap like that, I pick up a fine tooth comb, you'll see the hair come away. Now, this is a mannequin, not a human, so that gap may not look exactly like how a hard parting will when we do this on a live client, but we tap in place with our trimmer to set our hard parting in place. Then to further define it, the nape and body razor is really the perfect tool. It's small, compact, safety protected with our wire wrapping. The important thing to see here, and it doesn't demo as well on a live client, as it, on a mannequin as it does on a live client, but I'm going to simulate it here. I can leave my gripper in place or I can pull my gripper away. But People what, really like that gri gripper. People those are watching. awesome, yeah. These are available online, of course, at clipperguy.com. Anytime you would use section and clips, skip your clips and go with your grips because you can't put a clip in short hair like mine. I'll take a fresh one. You just put it in, push it in, push it up, and it holds. Weaves, foils, extensions, um, hair cutting. Anytime you'd be clipping, you should be gripping. So yeah, people love those. But here's what we want to cover. You're going to set your thumb at the parting. You're going to set the razor at the parting. Now, in order to etch in the line along the parting, you're not going to move this hand. When we shave, we move the blade. Here, we're, not, we're etching. We're not going to move the blade. We're going to set the blade in where we want it. We're going to set our angle as we wish it, and then we're going to do our etching with the thumb on the other hand. So this hand is going to hold this razor rock steady. This thumb is going to go boop. It's a tiny little boop. You're going to see the motion boop. The sound effect didn't work that time. Let's do it again. You're just going to see that thumb do the tiniest little wiggle. On a live client, the hair would pull and it would take up a little bit of tension at the scalp. Can you guys in TV land kind of catch what I'm saying would happen here? You won't see it happen on the mannequin because it's not a real scalp. But I'm going to set the razor in and I'm going to go boop. Do you see my thumb move? Boop. 
like that. Then I'm going to hop over, set the razor against my thumb, apply downward pressure with my thumb, and then go boop. Do you see my thumb move? It was so subtle and tiny. But we're going to set the razor in. We're going to go boop. We're going to set the razor in. We're going to go boop. We're going to set the razor in. We're going to go boop, boop, mm, boop. Okay? I got to have that little sound effect in there so you know what's happening. But that little movement, that little twitch, that little movement with my thumb is what's going to etch. Here's the thing. Anything you do with this, you're going to carve a huge gap. And the tiniest little movement with this is going to show up as a huge gap. You ever see some of those hard parts where it looks like a driveway leading up to a mansion somewhere? You could drive a Buick right down the road. Don't be that hair cutter. Don't do that. You just want to set the razor in and take your tension. 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 Tension tension like that. And the razor stays stable. This hand doesn't move. All the action happens here. That's how we're going to etch in a hard parting. And again, it's one thing to cut a hard parting in with a trimmer. It's a whole other thing to enhance it with a razor. You can use your shave cream. You can use your blade glide. Some people in the case of a hard parting don't like to have too much lubrication because they don't want too much movement or motion. I heard somebody on stage at a show recently say they cut their hard partings dry very specifically so they don't get more razor action than they want. And I thought that would kind of resonated with me. I said, you know, that's not a bad piece of advice. So 30 years in, Clipper Guy is still learning by paying attention to some of you guys when you do what you do. So here we go. We're going to wrap things up here. I'm Ivan. I'm Clipper Guy on behalf of Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. If you watch this live, thank you so much for being here. If you're watching on the replay, thank you so much for watching on the replay. Please comment before I stop talking. Comment like, and don't forget to share this on your timeline. You gotta go follow Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net. Obviously you're following Modern Salon or you wouldn't be with us here now. Go follow Clipper Guy, that's me. I've got a personal page, I got a fan page. We're all on Instagram. Jatai's got an Instagram, Modern's got an Instagram. I know because I tag them in half the stuff I do. So there's tons of great resources on the web from all of us. And that's what we're here to share with you. These platforms make it possible to share incredible amounts of information in new, fun, and exciting ways, both live online and watching on the replay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and following. You're entered in on the drawing. We're giving away the Nape and Body Razor Kit. Remember, you got a razor, you got a pack of blades, you got a bottle of Blade Glide included in there. We saw, we talked about crossover technology and education. We saw neck cleanup, sideburns, ear areas on our live model on Larry. We saw etching a hard parting here in on the mannequin. We loaded you up with a ton of great information. And I'm gonna end this program with the same two words I used to begin this program. Anybody who ever watches me live at a class, and by the way, where are we gonna be next week? Vegas, baby. That's right. The International Beauty Show in Las Vegas is next week coming up. I look forward to seeing you there. There are still tickets available for my uh, Sunday hands-on workshop, so I'd love to have you join me there. Um, I started the program by saying thank you for being here. I'm going to end with the same two words. Thank you so much for joining us today. On behalf of myself, Modern Salon, and Jatai Academy, have a great day.